Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to create designs using multiple strokes on the same object via the appearance panel. This design is a single circle with multiple strokes and a bitmap fill. The appearance panel is part of the studio. If you go to view studio appearance, it should be ticked and visible. It will then show you the properties of the currently selected object. In this case, it's the circle with the various strokes. In here, I can add or delete more properties, hide the visibility of some or change the setting by clicking on the color icon, the strokes with or the blend mode. For this video, I used assets that I put up on my Gumroad page. There's the checkered patterns, the seamless lace brushes, all available for free. I will also put the source files from this tutorial up there, so you can check how the files are actually built to recreate something that suits your needs. As you can see, when I click on a different object, it changes the appearance. Not all of them have the same structure, definitely not the same color, some have a few more strokes than others, but they all are based on the same principle of strokes and fills combined in front or behind each other. The fills on these shapes are all bitmap fills. You can change them easily via the gradient fill panel. It has the option of a type called bitmap. Selecting this one will let you open a file to choose as your fill pattern. Let's get started with a new shape. I choose the circle, draw the circle holding control to keep the proportions the same. It helps to have the layer visible. It inherits the last fill pattern I chose, the checker pattern from the styles that I created. They are part of those assets I mentioned earlier. I can just go through the styles and pick a different one. Let's go for blue and yellow. The three handles control the scale, the rotation and the center of the design. At this stage, the appearance panel shows no stroke and a fill set to normal. The next step is to assign a brush to the circle. I choose one of the lace brushes I created. They are part of the assets on my Gumroad page. Grab them for free and play with them. I have to scale the brush to be visible and match the size of the circle. I can click on the size in the appearance panel and change it to something more visible and then adjust the color. Now we have one object with one fill and one stroke, which is the normal setup. Affinity Designer allows you to create several strokes. So right at the bottom of the panel, there is the add stroke. I add a second stroke. In this case, I want a shadow. I can't use an inner shadow effect because it would use the lace as well. Instead, I use a simple vector brush that's just a gradient from white to black. I adjust the alignment from centered to inside and change the width of that one as well as the blend mode. Rather than go with a normal, I change it to multiply so the colors mix with the background. I also can change the opacity and I want it behind my lace pattern. This makes the lace pattern stand out a lot better. I add another stroke. I don't think this one is dark enough even with the multiply. I create the same thing, a simple vector brush, adjust the widths, adjust the alignment inside instead of center and give it a darker color still. Again set to multiply. This way I can achieve the contrast between the white lace and the pattern below. This way, the object already has one fill and three strokes. If I turn the last multiply off, you can see the change in contrast, so it's definitely needed. Next, I add the brush for a stitch pattern. I add a stroke at the bottom of the appearance panel, choose my stitch pattern from the brushes in my lace set and adjust the widths. 
and hope to see it. In this case, it's probably covered by the lace. If I increase the size, it will become visible. So setting the size big enough will show the pattern. I could have also altered the alignment as I did with the shadow brushes before and set it from centered to inside. Seeing the color of a stroke also comes with an opacity slider. I can make the stitches slightly less visible by moving the opacity to about halfway. That way they blend with the pattern. Now we have four strokes sitting on top of the fill. Let's add one more. I place this one below the white lace. Choose another lace pattern from the collection of brushes. And it becomes visible behind the white lace. By setting the alignment to outer, it gets pushed out even further and becomes clearly visible. I can now fine tune the width. Just like the normal color panel, in here I have a color picker and can choose a color from within the document. And just like in the color panel, you need to assign the colors, not just pick it. The stroke inherited the blend mode from the last set, which was the multiply of the shadows and the stitches. I set it to normal and then set the whole brush to be behind. Vector brushes can have an issue with the scaling depending on how many they can fit onto the length of the curve. So sometimes it makes sense to A, turn the scaling with the object on and try a slightly different size to see if it looks less distorted. When looking at the layers panel, we see it's still just one object, the one ellipse we started with. Adding multiple strokes with different brushes makes it look rather impressive though. Seeing all this is assigned to the one object, I can save this as a style. I create a new style category. Give it a name, it helps to organize your creations. There is no proper way to organize your styles in any order other than through the categories. And in there they will be voted by the creation date. The first style saved will be at the top, the last saved will be at the bottom. I add the style and even though the icon is not displaying it properly, most likely due to the multitude of brushes assigned. It works fine once I create a new shape and assign the style to it. In this case, I create a heart shape. It will show with the last fill and stroke pattern. Once I click on my style, it will take on that with all my layers intact. I can see it in the appearance panel. Not all of them are scaled properly, so I have to adjust some widths and some scaling to make it work for the heart shape. One problem with the heart shape is the very steep angle and the nodes in the center. Sharp corners like this will deform the vector brush. I create two extra nodes either side and delete the old one to soften it and the brush pattern works fine again. It's easy to adjust these patterns. I select a different brush for the first stroke. I adjust the width of the stroke and the direction of my shape. I reverse the curve. This way the wavy pattern of the brush is on the outside and not on the inside. That means I also have to change my shadow brushes and adjust the stitches. While I'm at it, I might as well change the pattern on the outside. So the stroke at the bottom of the stack will get a new brush. I adjust the widths of that one. As you can see, I can just quickly and easily change the brushes. And as long as I adjust the widths or adjust the settings of the brushes themselves to be larger, it's a really quick and easy task. As this is a standard vector object, I can still add effects to the design. 
an outer shadow will make it stand out in front of the shape behind it. I add a 3D effect as well, which will affect the brushes and in this case just the outer rim of the brushes because that is the edge of the shape. That's why the inner shadow wouldn't work. It would take the brush as part of the object and the inner shadow would just shade the brush shape rather than the heart shape or the circle prior. If you want effects applied to the different strokes themselves or the shape underneath, you would have to make those separate objects and apply the effect to each of those objects. I can now create a new style from the heart shape, seeing we added a different lace pattern as well as effects. I add the style to my category and if I apply that style to a new shape like the rectangle, it will have all the strokes and effects in place. Applying the first style to the rectangle shows some issues with the shadow shapes and the stitching while the second style works fine. That is due to the curve orientation. So if I reverse the curve, I convert it to a curve and reverse the curve, it will fix the issue. Let me illustrate the effect on something a lot simpler, just a plain straight line with the lace pattern assigned. If I reverse the line's orientation by using the reverse curve, you can see how the lace pattern flips. If I scale the line, you can see how the pattern is distributed along the length of the stroke. If I make it larger or the size of the brush smaller, it will fit better. When working with complex textured brushes, keep in mind that the size of the object in comparison to the pattern as well as the vector orientation do matter. If you found this topic interesting and you want to play around with the files, they are on my Gumroad page, the checkered patterns, the seamless lace brushes as well as the source files from this video. They all can be downloaded for free by simply putting a zero as the price. Of course, this approach is not limited to just lace brushes and textile patterns. Here's an example of a teddy bear using fur brushes. I stacked several fur brushes on top of each other to create a fuller and more interesting fur look. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon and let me know in the comments below what you would like to see on my channel. I will see you again soon.